All right, Sophie. Well, we had our fire drill. <laughs> we got it over <laughs> with. Um, proper introduction. My name is Joseph Martinez. Um, people know me as Jupiter Joe. I teach uh, astronomy uh, for the public. I do it as a volunteer. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to come down here today and meet you was was really inspired about what, uh, about seeing you at Astronomy Night. Um, I was inspired about seeing a lot of people at Astronomy Night, but you really stood out as the face of Astronomy Night. Oh, and, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. So before we even get into talking about Astronomy Night, um, I just wanted to learn a little bit about you. So where are you from? Okay, so my name is Sophie Alvarez. I'm originally from Paraguay. I came here exactly three years and five months ago. Nice. Yeah. I have a twin sister and 70 years old. That's about it. A senior year? Uh, and you live I'm a senior, yes. And, and I here. live in East New York. Yeah. And I'm really, really interested in photography. I love the Korean culture. Okay. And I have a new, like, passion which is astronomy nice yeah. so now did you have this passion before going to astronomy night or is this something that developed from there and um, it was before i had an internship at an organization called beam center okay and it was um every student in the school in here in the in this school goes um has an internship for around three months um at a place where teachers think that they will like learn things that they like Mm -hmm. And so I, I've always like expressed that I really wanted to, to go there because they, they do a lot of really interesting projects about, like, about everything, metalwork, woodwork, they work with kids, they work with technology, they do a lot of things. And so I really wanted to go there. And so this year they, they choose like a project for each year and this year was about astronomy. So basically what we did is um, we learned about astronomy and but it was like about like different aspects of it like it was the moon it was the stars it was some planets and it was like really different things but then to go with that we also built a um an eight foot uh, dome which is like it was like a 3d um uh, 3d map of the of the um stars of the mm -hmm. uh, northern hemisphere and the uh, southern hemisphere yeah, the whole celestial like sphere. it was the whole thing and yeah. it was like that was a really like. That's pretty impressive. What, what, what did you guys do with that? Um, we we had it was like just a uh, project for us. So it's like okay. we we had a small exhibition like in art exhibition after that, and like we invited some people to to go and see it. And yeah, that's basically it. We haven't like exposed it to the world uh -huh. or anything. Well, it should be. It, it's, it's definitely it's something pretty, that we really wanted to yeah. bring it to to the, to the astronomy night, but it was like we should have. <laughs> Brother, but it's like it's really big. It's, it's big. heavy. I, 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 yeah, that, that, that's a, that's definitely big. Yeah. But it's it's definitely something that kind of melds what well, meshes well with, you know, when people talk about steam or they talk about STEM projects. Yeah. And like steam would be STEM plus arts. Exactly. And a lot of the ways that people end up learning about the sciences is through arts. Yeah, it's exactly. the first thing that it, that really uh, grabs them. So when you talk to people about astronomy. They may not be interested in the physics about it. They may not be interested in knowing about distances or yeah. construction. But what they definitely are interested in is that's a really pretty moon or that's a really yeah. pretty nebula or exactly. that planet looks awesome. Yeah. Um, and those are the first things that kind of grab out. And then yeah. from there, they start you know, getting more and more involved. So you met the president. Yeah. So tell, tell me how you went about going to Astronomy Night, getting approved to go to Astronomy Night, okay. and what your feelings were getting there. Okay, so first, um, there were 13 students from my school that went to the internship at Beam Center, and from that, they chose four people. It was three of my classmates and I, and, and another two from other schools, mm -hmm. and so they chose us to represent Beam Center. So before that, uh, the White House sent an invitation to Beam Center, Saying um, through expanded options um, to say that they wanted uh, they wanted students who who were in the internship to to go to the to the astronomy night, and then after that, like it was like about three days before the actual event, they um, they sent an email to Beam Center saying that um, asking if they had someone who could um, introduce uh, 
to the president, they t talk about the moon through like, like looking at, at at a telescope, and they say, yeah, we do. Like we have Sophie, and they, yeah, yeah, we were gonna ask her if she she's up to this, and then they send me an email, and they were like, okay, so the White House wants yeah. you to to um to talk to the president about the moon and you know telescope and all that. Are you up to it, Sophie? And I was like. Is that even a question? Yeah. Like, How do you say no, right? How do you say no to that? He's like, they're basically telling me, you're going to be able to, like, you might, it's like, they first told me, like, don't get too excited. It might or it might not happen. Like, it, the, the, uh, it, the plans change. And, but it was like, it's fine. It's like, I was, I was like, it's like, I was, to my sister, like, I couldn't tell anybody uh, uh, before that. Right. And then, like, when the day got there, uh, they, like, arrived, I was like, is this real? Is this like? Is this actually like happening? And then when we got to Washington D.C., like that whole day, like we went around to see like the city and everything. And then uh, that day, I, I really wanted to enjoy the day, but I was so nervous about yeah. what was coming up yeah. that I, I I wanted to eat, but I couldn't because <laughs> I had a really upset stomach. It was like I feel like really excited, but really really nervous. Before, like. Um, about about it because like I, I um I have like a lot of, try like I I struggle when I have to speak and like mm -hmm. to like get my thoughts out of like through my mouth and it's like two words and it's like I was like what what would happen if like I I'm right there in front of people and then I can't say anything or I I it's like I was like I don't Stage know what's gonna happen to me <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen to me yeah and then when I was like right there like. In one of the entrances of the White House, I, um, my Brian, which is a, uh, the founder of uh, Beam Center, he told me like, okay, so where's your identification? Like, you we have uh, you have to go in now. <laughs> I didn't bring anything. I didn't bring any. Oh. He's like, I had my passport with me, like, but it was uh, back in the hotel, and they were like, where is it? And I was like, I didn't bring it. And he was like, Sophie. What are you gonna do? And then I thought my heart was going to come out of my chest. I was like dying. And then one of the guards heard that, and then he asked how old I was, and I said seventeen. He was like, "Okay, it's fine. You don't need it." Oh, that's good. And I was like, "Okay." And then when I got age got, helps out, right? Yeah. And then I got there. Like every step, every step I took, it was like I thought like I was just like going to like, my heart was gonna come out because mm -hmm. I was so nervous it's like I don't believe this like until like I just couldn't believe it and then I mean you look natural I mean watching you I up there I don't know how that happened like really watching really, you up there you flowed you were bright I mean, and that's really like what people anyone that I've talked to about it and I do lots of work with uh, children in STEM and in fact tomorrow I'll be at the Intrepid Museum um basically mentoring a uh, hundred students right. so there's a, a group of uh, STEM mentors yeah. that will go to the Intrepid and there's a hundred students from different schools all in the eighth grade and they're going to come to talk about STEM and learn about what people are doing in STEM and how it can influence their jobs in the future yeah. um, so whenever I talk to people like that and even my daughters because um, they watched the, they watched it with me and we're big astronomy geeks so it was something that we were really into, and um, they even said it. Like my my youngest daughter, she's thirteen, and she's a pro. I mean, she's guaranteed. She does this all the time with me. We set up telescopes throughout New York City, and that's part of what she does. And she's she realizes that in the past she was very shy, but when she pulls her telescope out, sets it up, and she starts talking with the public, it's, it's it just, completely. It's just disappears like I can watch her for hours and for hours in fact we were at the um, at the we marched in the Halloween parade and we went as NASA scientists and we had two rovers with us or actually three rovers with us <laughs> and so throughout the whole thing walking around all you would hear behind me because she was walking behind me with one of the rovers was people asking her questions about rover like what is that and then she would explain it she would go into the history of rovers and she never realized that this is something that she would want to do and in fact it's probably something that she may not want to do in the future as a job but it's something that she loves to do she loves to get involved in building robots and stuff like that so 
ex exposing people to different things yeah. that may not guide their job per se, but it definitely guides them in a path to say, hey, you know what? There are other things. I don't have to do with my what my parents did, or I don't have to yeah. do what my friend are doing. I can choose my own job based on what my interests are. So I and, and seeing you up there, like, and the way you were explaining, it was very clear that you had a full grasp of it. So talking about it, what did the president say to you? Well, at first, like, I went to like inside the White House uh -huh. before like what 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 is in the video, and basically they were like there's the clutch meeting, mm -hmm. and so like there were like a lot of people there, and then like we were just like waiting there because they were gonna take a group picture, and then they were like I did like, at first I I didn't like have a grasp of what was going on in there, and then just like we were there like all lined up, and then. Everybody's looking at the doorway, and I was like, "What's happening?" And then <laughs> Obama comes there, and I was like, "He, he, I don't know. He seemed like he, he was like he came right like from a cartoon or something." Yeah, he's yeah. like, "I don't know. I just had that impression." And he's like, "He's someone you usually see like in the websites or yep. TV, and he's right there in front of you." And he was like. He was like, and it's different for you, right? It's, it's really different. He was really tall too. Well, that, I was just going to say that. <laughs> I'm short, and he's tall, and then so there's a big difference there. <laughs> but yeah. I was going to say that a lot of times when you meet people that you're so used to seeing them on television, yeah, you don't have a real idea for how tall they are. Exactly. You've never stood behind a podium at the White House, so you don't know how big. But then when you start seeing these things up yeah. close, you're like, ah, oh, it's really tall. Yeah, he's really tall, and then like the podium was like. Kind of high too, so I, I like in some pictures you can't really see yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's like then like after that, um, we just like introduce ourselves, and then like I said like I'm Sophie Alvarez, I'm seventeen, and I'm from Brooklyn International High School, and then he. He like he looks like really straight at my eyes, and he's like, "I'm really proud of you, Sophie." Yeah. And then he was, and I was like, and after that, I was like holding my hand, and then one lady that like was talking, the one of the ladies that worked there, like she was speaking, like talking to me about the stuff happening. She was like, "Are you okay?" Like she was like, hey. and I was like, "He's like." But I, I mean, that's a great story. I mean, here you are, you, you immigrated to the United States, yeah, and three. Three years and five months later, yeah. you're meeting the president of the United States. That's just crazy. I mean, that's a story for stories right there. Yeah. Um, so now the telescope that you're using. Yeah. Did you ever use a telescope before that? I used a telescope only one time before that. Okay. Yeah, I went to, um, there's a place, I think it was up in Queens. It was an old, um, how do you call it, like the places for airplanes? Oh, uh, uh, an airfield? Yeah. Like an old it, airport? Like, really old, yeah. And so, I don't remember the name really, but it, it was around March, I think. And I, I saw the, the moon through, it was a really big telescope. It, it's like, it, it was like this, like, like you said, it was a, a group of astronomers who put telescopes around. Okay. And then, it, it's like, they do it like every Friday of like, I don't know what, what day of the month, like they do it every month. And so that, was just, in, that was in Queens, you said? Yeah, I think it was up in Queens. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'd like to find out. Because I'm part of the, I, I'm a member of the Amateur Astronomers Association of it, New York. It was, it was from there, actually. Okay, so the, uh, it could have been one of the uh, locations that they had, but I wasn't familiar with any in Queens that they were I, doing I, it. I, well, I'm but not they sure had if it was Staten Queens Island, that, Brooklyn. It was probably Brooklyn, but it was like really far up. Okay. Yeah. I think so. I, I can tell you the name when I remember. Awesome, yeah, you <laughs> yeah. can email me. But and yeah, that's so great. I went e and I saw the moon and like some uh, Jupiter's moons and like, yep. yeah, and that, that was basically it. like there was a lot of like, it wasn't like the best day to, yeah, to, to that, see things. That's what happens to us. <laughs> it wasn't the best day, yeah, but like that was the first, the first time and I was like amazed amazed by it because like I saw the moon like right like he was right in front of me yeah. and it was like crazy and then like when I got to use that telescope in the in the astronomy night it was like at first like they gave me the like, key and like before like right before the event started they just told me oh you can if it moves you can just like use this and to move it and that's it like that's basically what they told me like but okay. when I when I saw through it it was like a whole other thing. Yeah, it's, like, a, it's a big telescope. It was. Um, a, now, who, whose telescope was it? it was, it's at Smithsonian. Oh, from, yeah, from, from the museum. Smithsonian. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I mean, I've been to the uh, I've been to their uh, planetarium before. 
um, at the Smithsonian. It's really nice. And, and they have great programs where you can actually, um, they give lectures remotely sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go to their website and right from home you can link to their, to the uh, presentations that they're giving. Mm -hmm. And right from New York City you can, wow. you know. I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So it's, it's pretty cool. And there's lots of other websites that you can go to, like to, it, to fulfill that need to learn more about astronomy and definitely the Amateur Astronomers Association of New York is a great resource because it's right near New York City. Yeah. They do events throughout the year. When they're not doing events, when it gets really cold, um, they have free lectures that you can go to. And but more important for something towards yourself, um, I mean, nothing beats the comfort of at home, right? Yeah. So there's lots of websites that you can go to to, to further that. Um, now, do you have a telescope? Have you, like, does anybody in your family have a telescope that um, you can use? Nobody. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and it's tough because when you go to events, um, like you said, you had to go all the way out to the end of Brooklyn. Yeah. And what if it was cloudy that day? What? What if it was cloudy that day? Like completely cloudy, you wouldn't have seen the moon or you wouldn't have seen Jupiter and its yeah. moons. So, I mean, those are different, those are things that people have to be prepared for. And yeah. at the same time, when you don't have your own equipment, it's really difficult to, you know, get your. Oops, give me a second, sorry. Did it mean to interrupt? Let me just uh, turn this off. All right, so. I mean, so you were telling me some stories about uh, some memorable stories. Is there anything else memorable that happened during your uh, during astronomy night, like meeting somebody or something that? I mean, that was a great story about you leaving your passport behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but was there anything else that stood out about that night? Well, um, just the whole night was like. It didn't feel like it. There was one time actually. It isn't like that special, but it's just like in my head. Mm -hmm. It was like I was going to the bathroom, and then just like a couple, of the, I think they were teenagers. Like one guy and one one girl. They just like come to me. And they were like, "You were awesome out there. Can I take a picture with you?" <laughs> now, do you know who they were? I I don't. I now, and I was gonna ask you that. As far as the teenagers that were there, I mean, there were lots of. I mean, of course, there were lots of people that were there. But yeah. some of the important teenagers, not saying that the rest aren't, but you had like the uh, winners from the Google. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember the Google um, project that goes on. So Google provides uh, uh, awards to students that have, that have uh, completed um, science projects mm -hmm. throughout the world, and there's some fantastic, you know, uh, yeah. projects. So the winners um, were there, and uh, President Obama acknowledged them, and he, he set their names and introduced what they do. Now, were you able to meet any of those folks? I, I don't know. If like I don't know which uh, yeah, I mean, which it, student was yeah. which one. Like and I didn't really get to like socialize gotcha. much after that. It's like there were some people who were like it was really funny though because like after that I just came down the podium and then Obama obviously went there where the students were mm -hmm. and everybody was like just yeah. going to him and then <laughs> I, I he came like he came like right where I was sitting first and like he said, like, good job again. Like, he, like, grabbed my hand. And then after that, he so went... I did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> twice. And then, and then when um, he, he went to the other people, I just stood there in the side. And then there were some students that after, like, saying something to Obama, they were, like, looking at me. And they were, like, shh, 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 shh. And I was, like, but they never said anything to me. They were talking about me. But it's, like, I never got to, like, speak to no. other students. They were, like... Those two that I told you about when I was going to the bathroom, that was the only time. They were like, gotcha. can I take a picture with you? And I took a picture with them and that's it. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a great experience because you, know, you never know who they are. And you, in the future, it may come out that, like, hey, I took a picture with that person. Yeah. Or I recognize that person. Oh, there was actually another guy. Like, there was, like, a lot of people who had their own um, telescopes in there, like, right. in the backyard of the White House. And so there was one, uh, one, one guy that... Um, told me that he wanted to get a picture of me with his telescope, and I did that too. And it was like really funny because like he took it with a with flash, oh, and then okay. after that it was Lots like about the people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> couldn't really see anything because <laughs> it was really dark. So now, like as far as your, I mean, we were talking a little bit about your about you being in high school, and now what's your focus in high school as far as your classes? 
Um, it's actually because it's an international school, mm -hmm. so it's for newly immigrants, mm -hmm. people, uh, teenagers. So it's it's just general. Okay. So it's like mm -hmm. we have just like the the classes we have to take, and then if it's another thing, it's like we have art classes, but then that's it's not really like really broad. Right. And then um, after that, if we want to do something else, we have a lot of after after school um, programs and. Yeah, and the, some some organizations also work with the schools, mm -hmm. so we have like the option of doing that too. Like there is like coding, there is digital photography right now. There is Chinese club, Arabic club, and like a lot of like, gotcha. mostly like clubs that are like for um, people for the different, uh, different ethnicities. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I mean, that's important to have inside of a, an international school. Exactly. That we have a lot of diversity in the school. Yeah, and that's great. Yeah. Um, now, as far as your future, what do you see yourself doing in the future? In the future, it's like kind That's of blurry. Question. It's kind of blurry right now. <laughs> yeah, I would like to have a clear picture of it, but it's blurry right now. It's like I like so many different things. And like if you think about the three things that are like astronomy, photography, and Korean, it's like it's really hard to see like a combination of the three of them. Oh, like, I, I, I mean, astronomy and photography. I mean, those photography, two go together. You definitely have that. Yeah. And, and it's like Korean, funny. I mean, there's there's lots of opportunities to do, uh, you know, astronomy in Korea. Yeah. And it's really bright. I'll give you that. <laughs> exactly. it, it's really bright. I mean, my my daughters are Korean, so <laughs> yeah, they're part Very Korean. So, so cool. yeah, they uh, they they do their research, and yeah, it's. Korea and Japan are just very bright. Yeah, and so like as far as I, like as well as what I want to do right now, it's like I just want to go to college, finish college, and like that's that's what I have so far. Any ideas but, on what college? Right now, my top choice, like well, I actually like I really want to go upstate. I want to go out of. Okay. I want to get out of the city. It would be really nice to use it. Telescope too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there. yeah. Get out of like the lights of the city, and so like if um, I have to choose one, it would be New Paltz. So okay. New Paltz, like I, they have astronomy, they, they have do. photography. They do. Their campus is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one, and so you like I, I really have different ones. Is there's Pratt, there's Bar College, there's Brooklyn College. There's, I like there's all a lot them. of choices. Yeah. And so like that's as far as college choices. Well, I have other other choices too, but right now it's like I can like, say at the top of my now, head. I mean, now you as a senior, um, after this whole event, after everyone saw you on television yeah. and everything, after you came back to school, what happened? It like, was chaotic. It was chaotic. Lots of questions, right? Lots of questions. <laughs> they were like, I want to touch you because you touched the president. <laughs> <laughs> Even the teachers were like that. It's like, well, students and teachers are like, they were all the same. It was like, but it was really chaotic in the school, but it, it was even more chaotic back in Paraguay. Oh, I like, bet, I bet. It's a really small country, and so when something like this happens, it's like, I actually, when I went up there, like, talking to the president, I never, ever, like, I'm serious about this, like, I never thought about what would be the aftermath of yeah, that. Yeah, you, like, you don't think about that. Yeah. I, I really didn't think about that. I was just excited excited and nervous about that, that I never thought what, what would happen after that. At that, that point, all you were worried about was, let that, me make sure I say everything, and then I can go eat because yeah. I didn't eat before. Exactly, that was <laughs> it, that was it. I was like, I want hot chocolate, and that's it, after this, that, that's it. And then, and then like after that, it's like, the only thing that, like, the the two the two or three lines the two or three words that made like that huge impact back in Paraguay like was that at the end I said I'm I am from Paraguay and I am from Paraguay there like you go. that that phrase it, it was like so huge that I didn't realize it was going yeah, it's like, it, it, it was away. going yeah exactly and it's like because like, I didn't know like I don't know why I didn't think about that I didn't <sighs> think that I had to introduce myself it's like he's like hey come on Sophie and and then I was like, introduce yourself, but I didn't like plan to or anything what I was gonna say. And they, I'm from Paraguay, just came, like came out, like I didn't plan about it or anything. And then in Paraguay, it's like my mom is back in there, so like she was interviewed by like 
three or four or five different like TV channels, like TV stations, and then I was interviewed like four times by like by different radios, and it was just it was like crazy. I, it yes. felt really weird because people like I I have like four hundred friend requests in Facebook <laughs> right now. Like, nobody can <laughs> add me anymore, and 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 like people were like I had so many since like one minute after I came down. It's like my Facebook just started, like my phone started vibrating like <laughs> continuously and it wasn't a call or anything, it was like the different notifications. That's that it, I got. notifications, it was, mentions. It was crazy, people were like, you're my idol, you're awesome, and I was like, I'm just a normal person. I mean, honestly, you really, you, you really did capture what astronomy nights are supposed to be about. Um, looking at your face, looking at you interact with the president, I mean, that's what... In my in my passion, being sidewalk astronomy, I mean that that's really what we look for. We look to inspire people, but we want the people that are doing the explaining mm -hmm. to be inspired to do that as well. Not just someone who can read, or you know, a manual and say, okay, this is this star, or this is the moon, yeah. or it's two hundred thirty-eight thousand miles away, and they and they, and they don't have that passion. Whereas yeah. you, it was full of passion, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to come here. Um, one of the other reasons I wanted to come here today, um, seeing you up there, seeing you operate the telescope and seeing you interact with everyone, um, this whole interview was kind of brought about because I was reached, uh, someone reached out to me. So Kevin Kawai, he's the uh, communications coordinating, uh, communication, marketing communications coordinator, sorry, for Celestron Telescope. So the telescope that you were using the company that created that telescope, he's uh, basically the coordinator for the marketing of that of that company. Um, and part of his job is really to reach out to people like yourself, reach out to organizations um, either like myself with Jupiter Joe Sidewalk Astronomy or the Amateur Astronomers Association of New York, and work with those uh, uh, institutions to try and get or to in his case to try and promote not just astronomy. But uh, promote all the different sciences that go along with this company. Mm -hmm. So they have telescopes, they have microscopes, they have binoculars, they have different optics. Um, but at the same time, it all kind of comes together into what we were talking about before, it being STEM, uh, STEM uh, outreach. And that's his big thing. And they're really impressed with the way you were, you know, you handled yourself. And at the same time, they really feel that you were a good face for STEM for younger girls. Um, and that was one of the things that we were talking about before um, that I'll be doing tomorrow. So before I get into what I'm going to do tomorrow and how I needed your help for something, um, what I wanted to do, uh, Celestron Telescopes wanted to present you with a gift. Um, so they sent... And I realized we were talking about you were a little shorter, but this yeah. is kind of big. They <laughs> want to provide you. you with this telescope. Right. Um, this is their uh, Celestron 90UT. The telescope is totally electronic, um, which is going to help you a lot because, granted, you may not know how to work your way around the night sky just just yet. Yeah. But. What this allows you to do is connect your tele your cell phone um, wirelessly to the to the telescope, and you'll install an application on your phone, and you can or a tablet, and you can control the telescope right from the cell phone or tablet. Um, it's going to help you a lot more with it, learning the night sky, and this is a perfect telescope to use here in in the city. Um, so being from East New York, or even if you travel throughout New York, or you know, if you're heading back home for a visit and you want to bring me a telescope with you, it's not unmanageable. It's something that you could pack up in a, you know, a large bag and impress your friends. Yeah. So I will give you all their information. I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. But this is uh, something that they hope that you use to not just uh, find pleasure out of it, but they hope that you'll carry on in the future and that you can inspire other people like you did. All right. So in, in, in that respect, about inspiring people on um, in STEM, tomorrow, like I said, I'll be sitting down with, you know, hundreds of girls 
um, talking about STEM. What advice would you have for young girls that are, they may not be looking at STEM as a possible um, job opportunity in the future. Um, this is something that some of them were kind of talked to and they kind of figured, well, let me just see what's available. What advice would you, if you were attending, what would you like to hear me say to you? It's like it's really like small and it might not be like as well really like mind blowing but it's like girls can do just anything as like as much as boys can. Absolutely. It's like there is not something as like you're a girl so you can do this. You're a girl and you can that if you want to. It's like you're a girl and like just like him and just like all of other other boys, like you can just do that like if you want. If you want to do it, there's no one who can tell you that, like, you can't do that because you're you're a, you're a girl. It's like, if you propose yourself to something, there's nothing that you that it's going to stop you from doing right, that. There's no limitation to it. And exactly. So now that you've met the president, uh, you've you were in an astronomy program and you got a good background in astronomy now. Yeah. Um, and now that you have this great telescope, mm -hmm. what's your next step? What, what, are you, what do you see yourself doing? It's, like I told you, it's really blurry. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I feel like that like, whole event and like, the experiences that I've had since that, it's like, it's like a calling. You know, it's like, even my mom and like other people were like, Sophie, do you realize what this is? Like, do you really, do you realize what this means? Like, I feel I have to do something with it. I don't know what yet, but it's like I just feel like I have to do something related to it. It's That's like, great. Yeah, I just like have something inside of me that it's waiting to come out. Well, aside from the telescope um, that Celestron Telescopes uh, donated to you, um, from Jupiter Joe Sidewalk Astronomy, we realized that you need to learn how to use the telescope. I do. <laughs> um, so I'm going to dedicate an hour of time to teach you how to set it up and teach you how to use it. So we can coordinate, figure out a day where you want to get together with your family or whatever, and we can get together at a park or something and teach you how to use the telescope before it gets really cold outside. Yeah. And that way you can actually get some viewing done and then you can learn how to use this right from your own home. All right? Sounds good. So. Sophie, I want to thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. And thank you very much for, as I said before, being a bright face for astronomy. Thank you. Um, and yeah, we'll figure out how you're going to get this home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. So what I'm going to do, uh, let's... Uh... Cool.